so for today, as I say, we will do kidney specifically. So this part, this kidney part is actually under the chapter homeostasis, which you can learn. Uh, basically, homeostasis is how you regulate your internal environment. Lah. Okay, so in kidney, right, basically, we will learn two things. Okay, number one, of course, we all know kidney help us to pee, help us to excrete, right, under excretion. So they help us to excrete in urea. Correct? So uh, that's the main function of kidney law. Uh. So they will learn how kidney actually help you to produce urea, produce urea. Now, and also kidney, remember, help us to get rid of excess water. So if you drink too much water, then after that you go to toilet and then pee, release all the excess water, right? Okay, so this is something that we also learned in uh, the chapter two, amoeba, called osmoregulation. Okay, so osmo means water. Regulation means like you control the water in your body. Ah, so kidney also help you to make sure the water level in your body is, you know, not too much, not too little. Understand? So before we start with kidney, right? Okay, we need to look here first. Okay, so I put a picture of kidney here, really, whereby now you need to know that there are three tubes connecting to your kidney. Okay, there are two blood vessels and one ureter. So blood vessel, here you have renal artery and renal vein. Okay, that's you all your chapter 10, your blood vessel knowledge. Artery. So artery, is it going inside the kidney or out of the kidney? Which way? Ah, so you remember now. Come on, let's go, let's go. Renal artery. So you don't care about the word renal, just the word artery. Generally, artery will go which direction? Yes, definitely it goes in. Very good. Okay, those who answer in, okay, all correct. So uh, because artery right, comes from your heart, right? Always heart. Uh, Artery carries blood from heart. So they say from heart, it goes into your kidney. And okay, then vein, of course, goes the other way. Lah. Okay, so basically, we know artery, right? That as we always learn, artery carries oxygenated blood, carries nutrients to your body. Okay, but for this renal artery, right, of course, it's not just nutrients. There's also got waste. Uh, your urea mixed together already. So these two nutrients, urea, waste together, go inside your kidney. Okay, so your kidney basically does this. Your kidney will, will then see, okay, for nutrients, okay, I take out. Oh, okay, go well, uh, urea, okay, put here. Or oh, nutrients, come here. Waste, come here. So basically, your kidney is separate the waste and the nutrients from your blood. Because when your blood enters, right, let's say here's your blood, right? Okay, here's your blood, right? And the nutrients, uh, the waste, all mixed together. Okay, then your kidney, separate the waste, come out, and then separate the nutrients. Okay, so the nutrients, right? They will, your kidney will put it into the renal vein. And then give back your and flow back into your body. Like imagine wherever you say renovating goes into your body, come out from the kidney, are uh, the nutrients of the put inside here. Then the, the waste, right, which is basically your urea, right? Uh, will all come, come inside the ureter. So that is actually your urine, your pee, basically. Uh, so things that after what they form it is basically your urine. Uh, excess urea in your body, the one they put that is ureter. Ureter then will go to your bladder, uh, go to your nail type. So this is where your pee, your urine, will be stopped. Lah. Of course, we have two kidneys, right? So the other kidney is at the other side. Lah. We'll do the same thing also. Uh, then after that, you release the urine. Lah. Okay? Mm. So that's basically what kidney does. So next thing is, right, which parts of the kidney, right, that separate the urea, the waste and the nutrients, right, actually occurs in this thing called the nephron. Okay, so nephron is inside your kidney. And they're not just one nephron, there's millions. Uh, see, by one girl, nephron inside your kidney. As you can see, after that, the renal artery, see, it branches out into many small blood vessels. Yeah, because it's going to all the different, different nephron. And then nephron help you to do the process that I mentioned in just now. All right, so far, everyone okay? Uh? Okay, so straight away, let's go, page 26. Okay, you can look at the beautiful drawing over here. Okay, so basically, again, kidney. And I can show you, the nephron. Okay. Complicated. Like you added that very complicated. Okay, so kidney, right? Same thing, renal artery, renal vein, ureter. So once the renal vein carries the blood into the kidney, you can see, right? Okay, first it comes into this like blood capillary like that. Okay, so this blood capillary thingy, it's not called blood capillary here, it's called glomerulus. Whereby it's basically something like artery capillary vein. Similar, actually. Okay, here, just the name is a bit different. Okay, here they call it as afferent arterial. Go into here, glomerulus. Then come here to efferent arterial. Okay, 
So basically what's happening here at the glomerulus is, right, they want to take out the blood and put inside the nephron. And then only you slowly separate. Okay, so this process is known as ultra-filtration. Okay, I know it's filtration. So basically here, right, this whole thing is your nephron. They okay, start from the, the, the Bowman's capsule here, ah, like, a, like a C shape thingy. This is where your nephron starts. So what they're doing, they want to do here is right, they want to take, they want to transport the blood into the nephron, into the Bowman's capsule of the nephron. So this process is called ultra filtration. Now, how does this process occur? Right? It's actually you learned before because it's the same process as formation of tissue fluid. Your form four chapter 10. Remember this? The time we the form four chapter, you learn this, right? Your artery will flow to capillaries that time, right? Ah, then suddenly your blood will come out from the, the blood vessel, from the capillary there, and then form tissue fluid inside the intercellular spaces, remember? Ah, here is exactly the same. Okay, you remember why the tissue fluid can come out on that time? Why the blood can suddenly come out from the blood vessel? What happened there at the time I learned? Why during the chapter 10, the formation of tissue fluid, how does the blood come out? Okay, very good. It's about high pressure. Yes, train very good. What caused the high pressure? Why suddenly here got high pressure? Because what suddenly changed? Ah, that caused the high pressure. Okay, the diameter. Yes, correct. The diameter, yes, change size, right? It becomes small, right? Yeah, we learned that here, the, the, the arteries from big suddenly become small. Like that, right? Here is exactly of same exactly the same when I, when I say okay so big suddenly becomes small so the efferent is big efferent is small so they will meet somewhere inside here so the efferent and the efferent right same thing is big suddenly become small so same thing here this part will suddenly have the high hydrostatic pressure so they will force the blood out so when the blood come out ah, then it comes into the nephron Okay, so the explanation is same diameter of apron larger than efferent arterial. Then got high hydrostatic pressure in glomerulus. The pressure then forces content of blood into the cavity of Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule is the beginning of the nephron. Finish ready, law. That's the first process, and this process they, they very much like to ask very a lot, a lot very often. But like one of the most common part process they will ask is this one: how the blood goes to the nephron. Okay, so by the way, that time we learn right when blood come out, we don't call blood anymore. It call, it's called tissue fluid because not everything in the blood can come out, right? Blood and tissue fluid is different. Now here also the same, and the blood come out right, we don't call it blood anymore. When the blood goes into the Bowman's capsule of the, of the nephron, right, it will be known as glomerulophilic. Okay? And the reason is same. Why the name will change? Because there are three things that cannot come out. Okay, guys, come. That time is also same, just like the blood form tissue fluid. There are three things that come, cannot come out. So that's why here I only say certain contents of blood. Because three things cannot come out. We talk about the three things. Number one, don't have. Remember not what are the three things that cannot come out from your blood? Okay, don't have red blood cell number one. Good. Some more. Don't have platelets. Okay, Isabel, Julian, very good. No platelets and also no plasma protein. Plasma protein are basically uh proteins in your blood, law. Okay, like the what thrombokin, uh not thrombokin, the prothrombin, thrombin, and the blood clotting, those proteins are uh, done. So that is the first process. So now my blood successfully come out into the nephron already. Okay, Bowman's capsule. So why is it called Bowman's capsule? Okay, last time there's no scientists, right? They don't too free, nothing to do. So they, they call it Bowman's capsule because it looks like a bow. You know, a shoot arrow, that bow. That's called bow. You can remember that, bow. Okay, but then no function. Right? Once the blood comes inside here, okay, done. Nothing here already. Okay, the next part is where the main thing, main importance, main function starts. Proximal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle, and also distal convoluted tubule. So I remember these three parts as P, H, D. Okay, uh, like you all let's then go for study professor PhD. So P 
stands for proximal convoluted tube. Okay, what is the name like that? Okay, I explain a bit. Uh. Tubule means tube. Uh, guan, no? Convoluted means twisted. Jun lai, jun chi. Proximal means first. So this is the first twisted tube. Now this is called loop. It is like a U-turn and it's called loop. And then the, the Henley is probably somebody's name. Loop of Henley. Somebody discovered this. Okay. Then this one is the distal. Distal means second. Proximal first, distal second. So it's the second twisted tube. Okay. So, okay, listen carefully. Ah. These three parts, right? What they do, very similar. Which is they absorb the nutrients into your blood. Okay, you see, ah, the nephron, right, is surrounded by all these uh, blood vessels, blood capillaries, something like that. So basically, they absorb nutrients into it. Absorb, 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 absorb. Then you can see right, the nutrients right, all eventually joins to the efferent, uh, yeah, this, this, this renal vein. And then the nutrients will go back to your body. Ah, so that's how they separate the nutrients. They just absorb the nutrients in your blood. So once the, 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 this glomerular filtrate flows until here, basically you got no more uh, nutrients already. It just left waste your urine. Ah, so your urine then will flow into here. Finish already. Okay. Ah, then you reflow it, then you just then you come into here. Okay, then one later we talk about it. So basically the process here is called reabsorption. So reabsorption is the process of absorbing the nutrients into your blood. Reabsorption is the process of seeing yang jing shi shui. Understand not? Okay, but you must say reabsorption. If you just say absorption, wrong. Because absorption, right, is occurred inside your small intestine. Where after you eat already, you absorb nutrients into your blood. Then when the blood flow to your kidney, right, I absorb the second time. That's why it must call reabsorption. Okay, ah? Now, then you need to know what do they absorb? What is the nutrients they absorb into your blood? Okay, so actually uh, from the proximal loop of honey and distilled converted to where all the nutrients they absorb is very similar. Right? Okay, you see, ah? For here, Number one, at the PCT, la, I just call it PCT, la, proximal converter tubo, they reabsorb all, 100%, 全部, everything, all glucose and amino acid, they reabsorb here. Okay, the process is not too important. La. Okay, the process is they say active transport. Okay, because why process is important? Because usually this part, they ask in the structure. La. If assay, they only need to mention the transport. Active. Then, next, they absorb vitamins, Sodium ions and chloride ions, or mainly they are mineral salts. Lah. But you must say sodium and chloride ion, you cannot say salt. Somehow they don't accept that here. Okay. PCT, then, then, then proximal converted to the yeah. Don't sleep, don't sleep. <laughs> I just read the short one here. Okay, yeah. Same, ah. they absorb nutrients into your blood. Okay. Then, uh, passive transport here for this one. Then water, no, which is osmosis. So, what they reabsorb here. All of your glucose amino acid, salts, and water. Now, for salt and water, they don't absorb all. They absorb just part of it only. Okay. So next part, when I come to the loop of Henley, what they reabsorb is the same, except for glucose amino acid. Why? Because all glucose amino acid, they put back inside your blood already, all 100% done already. So when it comes to here and here all, there will be no more glucose amino acid already. That's why this part, loop of Henley, and these still converted to right, they cannot absorb glucose. Right? Okay, so if your proximal converted tubo right fail to absorb all the glucose, right, the glucose eventually will flow, 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 flow into your urine. Ah, then the glucose will go into your bladder, lor. then you have diabetes. Tang Yao Ping. Ah, so that's why if you eat too much sugar, too much glucose, too much yeah, sugar, lah, your proximal converted sometimes cannot absorb all the glucose. Then some of it will eventually flow into your pee. Ah, then go getting money, so. Understand? So, okay, then we continue to stay here first. So, in your this loop of any, I also absorb water and salts. Same thing. So, it's the same as here, except for the glucose and amino acid. Okay? So, water is still osmosis, but the, 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 the salts here right, become active transport already. Why? Because from here, here they're right, you still got a lot of salt. It's high to low. That's why it's passive transport, a high to low concentration. But when you come to here, the salt is slightly lesser already. Low to high. That's why now it's uh, active transport. Okay. Then here they go say 
descending and ascending. So descend means go down, right? You know what? Ascend go up. Right? So you can see there's the descending, you see oh, the going down part. So the part is going down, maybe absorb water. The part is going up, maybe absorb salt. Okay, how to remember that? You just remember that water flow down more easily. So if water come down at the time, they can absorb it easily into the blood. Okay. Now, moving on, the last part, distal converted tubule. So for distal converted tubule, also the same, reabsorb water and your salts by active transport. Okay, however, the reabsorption of water and salts here, right, like we mentioned in this week's class, is affected by that hormone ADH, salt affected by aldosterone. Meaning, this part, right, your body can control how much water to absorb, how much salt to absorb, depending on the needs of your body. So, they will sometimes absorb more, sometimes absorb less. Ah, like that time we say, if, your body, if you never drink water, your body no water, right? Ah, then here, they will absorb more water back into your body. I mean, you need more ADH. Ah, so, this part is under the osmo regulation, one, which we'll talk about it later. So, for now, you just know the function first. Okay? So, like I said, once your filtrate flow until here already, right? You got no more nutrients to absorb already. So you're left with your waste, which is basically your pee, your urine. And then the urine all will mass up into here, which is called collecting duct. So this process is called secretion. So at the end of your DCT, secretion occur. Secrete means piedeo, they release, pang deo. So they will release the urine into the collecting duct. And then collecting duct. So eventually the collagen all will, will join in this thing called ureter. Ah, then like this now I say, lah, the pee will go into your bladder, and then you pee out the urine later. Okay, so you help me add one sentence here. Collecting duct, basically what happens here is urine is uh, secreted into your collecting duct. Okay, now first, I want to ask you one thing. You all know the difference between urine and urea or not? No difference or not? Urine. At that time you say urea, sometimes you say urea. Why sometimes we use different terms? What, what is actually the difference? Who knows? <laughs> okay, it's very simple. Now, urine and urea is like Milo powder and your Milo, the drink itself. So, every time you go mama order Milo, right? They will mix with what? Milo, mix with water, and maybe mix with condensed milk, maybe a bit of sugar. Okay? So, that is called Milo. Milo powder is just the powder itself. So here the same. Urea is just urea. Urine is mixed with water, urea, salt. Ah, so urine is basically inside, consists of probably excess water that your body don't want. Okay, urea, and also maybe excess salt inside. Ah, so you got excess salt, excess water, and then mixed with the urea. So in Chinese, it's niao suan and niao sui. Lah. So niao suan mixed with the water and salt already. Lah. That's your pee. Understand? Mm, done. Original, original, original. So, okay, done already here. So, basically, that is your whole nephron. No? So, remember, nephron starts from the Bowman's capsule, then your, then your PhD, la, PCT, look of handy distal converted tubule. So, what happens here mainly is reabsorption. It absorb the nutrients into your blood. The only difference you know is that PCT absorb all glucose amino acid. Okay, water, salt. Then, we mean just water, salt, water, salt. Simple. But of course, don't forget the first process long ultra filtration, whereby the blood comes into the left front. Okay, uh, so okay, honestly, not very hard one. Come, let's try a few questions. Yeah. Okay, uh, now, before we do this one, uh, see you can recognize this now. So P, what is P pointing at? So P is pointing at here. P is the Okay, yes. Wow, reaching very good. Uh. Yes, uh, the Bowman's capsule. Hey, can, hey, hey sorry, this is not Bowman's capsule. Wrong, okay. Bowman's capsule is this one. Sorry, uh, it's not Bowman's capsule. Uh. They're pointing at the, the, the here, uh, see this, the blood vessels. Uh, inside the Bowman's capsule, the blood vessel, the, 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 the capillary there. Uh. So this one is glomer. Rulers. Actually, all of you also say Bowman's capsule. Uh, they, I don't know why, so I follow you. Okay, this is not Bowman's capsule. Okay, Bowman's capsule is this part, the C part. Okay, so the question is pointing at the blood capillaries there. Okay, you see one more time. Ah. 
uh, here, ah, uh, see this, they point at this one, right? So this one must say glomerulus, ah, uh, here point for you already, one. Okay, uh, glomerulus inside the Bowman's capsule. So this is, this is the part where sometimes you all will get confused. So they ask you to label, see carefully, okay? Now, then they ask, uh, what is the process that takes place here? So just now you show you the notes, right? The process of pushing the blood out, okay, it's called ultrafiltration, no? Okay, now why, why they put the, 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 the process like that, right? Okay, because when they push the blood out, right, they are basically filtering the blood. I'm saying goli zhe na shui, right? Filter means goli. Because not everything the blood come out, right? Something can come out, the big things cannot come out. Uh, why they put ultra? Because it's very chunky, very keng punya filter lah. That's why it's called ultra filtration. All right, explain the process that occurs at P. So as always, they will ask us to explain this process. Now, just like formation of tissue fluid, big suddenly become small. So remember, lah, the big becomes small, punya cube is called afferent. Big, that girl, then the efferent. Ah, a, then only E, alphabetical order. So what we can say here is, okay, I'll show you for you, ah, the diameter of afferent arterial is big, sorry, ah, is bigger than Sampai pukul berapa? I think 11.40, 11.45 like that. Ah, if you need to leave early, I, I think the, 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 the important thing until 11, around 35 like that should be able to finish. In the last 10 minutes, if you just go through a bit of uh, kidney problem punya, punya part lah, but not too important lah, that one. Yeah. What time you need to leave uh, RVE uh? Yeah, okay, come. Next. Uh, diameter of afferent arterial is bigger than afferent. So remember, lo, big becomes small. Suddenly, you will have the hypoperfusion. Big becomes small. Suddenly, you will have the hydrostatic pressure. Yeah, so must put hydrostatic pressure is pressure only they might give you wrong. So better to say high hydrostatic pressure. So you can say this causes high hydrostatic pressure and must say at the glomerulus. Ah, so because the high pressure is inside here. The, this is where the A and the E meets. So must say in the glomerulus. Right? Then you can say, no, this pressure Forces, forces, you see the pressure, beat, forces, certain contents in blood plasma. So, like I say, not everything the blood come up. This is I would say certain contents in blood plasma, they force it into the Bowman's capsule. Okay, they force it into the C shape needed. From glomerulus, I go into the Bowman's capsule. Next, explain one difference between the contents of Q and R. Right, guys, this one very common question also. So besides the, the glomerulus, the hypertrophization that we just did, right? Now, they want to know the difference between contents in Q and R. Means inside the Q, inside the R, got what difference? Remember now? I mean, uh, can, can figure out or not? I haven't mentioned this now. Lah. So what's the main difference? So inside here and here, what would be the main difference left? Who can figure out? Okay, Minkin, yes, very good. Few got people know that. Remember here, you mentioned what happens here. Okay, here, no red blood cell plasma. All also don't have red blood plasma, uh, red blood cell plasma protein. Actually, this whole thing also don't have because after here already, the blood, the red blood cell cannot come out already. Ma. So the whole nephron also won't have red blood cell. So here actually the same. Ah, yes, the proximal Q. So proximal actually got one extra thing that the whole behind here all don't have one. What is that thing? Ah, yes, we also. Very good. Isabel, yes, correct. So the answer is glucose and amino acid. Lah. Okay, so the difference is Q. Yeah, that for this one. Contains the two things, glucose and amino acid. So after the proximal converted to right? Glucose amino acid no more already. Right? I say only that part where it will absorb the glucose amino acid after they don't have already. Right? So glucose amino acid, but R do not 
contain glucose and amino acid. Then the question, of course, asks you to explain. So it's too much. So I state the difference already. Now, why? Why PCT got the collecting duct behind in your pee? Don't have. Right? So if your pee got glucose, means you got diabetes already. Ma. Correct? So why here behind don't have? So what happened at Q? The time we say, yes, exactly. We will say because all, semua, trampo, 100% of glucose already reabsorbed. So remember, ah, must say we. Absorb because all glucose and amino acid has been com okay. I will add one more word here completely reabsorbed. So add your Q there, PCT, absorb everything already. All right. Now, name the hormone that controls permeability of the nephron to water. Okay, so what's the hormone that controls water here? Uh, this hormone this week we also got learned just now, also mentioned is the what's the water hormone, the P hormone? Yes, correct. Must say ADH. Okay, but then yeah, write the full name now, huh? NT GU NT GU erratic hormone. Yeah, so try to write the full name if you remember. Okay, so yeah, ADH. Now, then, okay, we do this question. This one, even though we haven't learned yet, we are teach after this, but then should be able to do that, huh? Or be very smart one. Like, um, how hormone name in C1, which is ADH, responsible in osmo regulation during a hot day? So why this hormone related to temperature, that hot day? So can you guys relate, you know, why hot day, this hormone is involved in controlling water in your body. So can you guys tell me, you know, during hot day, what will happen? What will happen to your body that relate to water? Of course, hot, you will. Yeah, so you lose water, you will sweat. Ma. Correct? So when you sweat, your body when you water is lesser or more. You sweat already, ma. so of course, lesser water, right? Yeah, so if lesser water, do you need more ADH? Or lesser. So you got lesser water already, ADH the day, so we go say, and today we just only learn, of course, you need, yes, you need more. Very good. Because you want to absorb more water back into your body at the distal convoluted to here, ma. You know more water, so you want to take back the water into your body. No? That's how we explain exactly like that. Lah. Ah, so you just say, uh, more water is lost through. Sweating. So if you sweat, use more water, right? So therefore, more ADH. So then three marks, so you don't need to write too much. So say more ADH will be secreted. And therefore, more water is reabsorbed. So again, reabsorbed. At the distal convoluted tube. Okay, all right, short distal convoluted tube. Okay, all right, footing lah. I can't do the easy distal convoluted tube. All right, done. So let's go through um uh, a few more, a little bit more. Okay, let's have a look at page um, 92, question 15. Can write short form or only write the full version? Uh, hormone must must try to write full name. These two convert to definitely must write full name. Lah. Okay, hormone depends on some teacher did accept short form right, for the hormone. Uh, yeah, okay, that's why all time when you write hormone, right? You write already, right? Then you can write bracket like that. Then the subsequent one, you can then write short form. But you still need to write the full name in the first time, right? But this two convert to of course must write full name, like this one. Okay. Yeah, because there's an structure for their name. Next, page 92. So this question, they're asking the same thing. Okay, you say we later do yourself because it's the same thing. They ask process that takes place in glomerulus and bobon capsule. So glomerulus and bobon capsule, the same thing, like ultra filtration. Explain the process, same as just now. Ah, 
big apron, go to small even, high pressure, blah, blah, blah. Okay. This one, the next thing I want to do. So the next thing that they like to ask, right, is like they compare different contents at different parts of your nephron, which you can see here, uh, P is Manila. Ah, here, your distal convoluted tube. Q, you're collecting that, which is your urine already. Okay, so right here, the RDCT collecting that. Okay, you can see glucose amino acid just now we did already. Lah. Ah, when reached to your P, definitely zero because you absorb everything already. So for these two questions, they ask very simple. They just ask state one difference. Now, if, if you don't know the difference, you just look at the table. Lah. It's really shown here. You just don't need to explain. One mark only. So the difference is just say P, same as just now, contains glucose amino acid. Q does not. Easy. I mean, they give you already, right? Okay, explain really know how to explain. Now, for P, uh, urea. So urea now, this is a bit weird. Because you see urea, right? When it comes to, when it's at P, it's lesser. And Q, collected with, suddenly become more. Why over here, your urea concentration increase? Why? Who can tell me why here lower, but here more? Okay, now, you see, ah? Because, right, throughout this whole thing, we carry out reabsorption. Meaning you reabsorb water. It's the meaning of being reabsorbed. Meaning, right, when here, right, when, the, when I flow to here already, right, the volume of water, is it more or less when I reach Q? See, right? This whole, when the, the fluid flow, 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 I reabsorb, reabsorb the water. Man. So when the water comes to here, right, the volume definitely lesser already. Lo. Exactly. That's why the concentration increase, lah, just like chemistry. Lo. Okay, understand or not? Okay, just like you make Milo like that. Okay, if your Milo, you put a lot of water, the Milo powder, you put a little bit. The Milo, no taste. It will be very diluted. Okay, that's it. Basically, what happens at P, you still got a lot of water. Now, when you slowly, slowly flow to Q, you slowly absorb the water already. That's why when you come to Q, the water left a little bit. Uh, your Milo is still the same. I said, now, more concentration. Uh, you drink the Milo, oh, you can taste better right now. Uh, taste the urea more right now. That's why it's more concentrated because the volume decreased already. Because you absorb back already. Understand or not? So that is the reason why urea here is more. Understand? Is it because it's concentration, ah, not the, the 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 mass or the 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 the, the mole Okay, it's the concentration. Yeah, ah? Okay. Then these two you represent nothing much one. Okay, D. The nephrons of can later we'll do one question to explain this one. Later, ah, okay, we'll do this one first. Now then, then if we look at D, they ask the nephrons of kangaroo rats. Okay, kangaroo rats is like is an animal that live in desert. Okay, some like camels and that have very long loops of handy. Okay, let's answer this part first. Why animals that live in desert got long loop of handy? Ah, let's see, they got longer of this thing. Why le? Ah, okay, sorry, ah, uh, should be like uh, okay, yeah, why? Why the long loop of animal be long if for those desert animal? Okay, maybe again, yes, very gang. Uh, yes, correct. Because I want to absorb more water into your body into body lah. Because I live at desert, yeah, we eat as a high. Gang, uh, so no ah, uh, because in desert, right? you lose more water, ma. so your body very dry, not enough water. Ma. So you look at handy longer, you absorb more water into your body. As then not. So you won't scat not enough water, so you can store more water. So that is the reason. So right here, long load of handy is to reabsorb more water. Okay, but the main question is they ask state the effect on the filtrate from in Q. So Q is your P. So your urine, of course, definitely be more or less. You reabsorb more water back into your body, the P that you secrete definitely will be lesser, right? Yeah, so the urine produce is lower, or you can say, uh, yeah, lower in volume, but the color, uh, if you pee very little, right, the color usually is very dark, very yellowish, ma. yes, concentration, but higher in Constant. Okay, so come, 96. Okay, so now you're going to compare all the things, all the, the, the contents at different parts of the nephron. So now it's not just like just not two parts, now they compare three parts. Okay, uh, all right, this one can, no problem. So, okay, let me just go through here a bit. Uh. Blood plasma 
in the afferent artery. So afferent artery basically is your blood vessel, the glomerulus, the part. Of. Okay, I'll draw here for you. Okay, glomerular filtrate basically is in your nephron, means in your Bowman's capsule and onwards. So Bowman's capsule, distal convoluted tube, loop of Henle, and then this eh, just now was proximal convoluted tube, sorry, and then distal lastly. Uh, this whole part is glomerular filtrate. Okay, the urine is inside your collecting duct already. Yeah. Now, actually, uh, got one. It's supposed to be a bit labeling here, like, Okay, this one actually the answer I wrote here is P, and this one's S. Yeah. So we just label here P and S, lah. Huh? All right. So first, we compare these two first. Blood plasma here and glomerular filtrate. So you can see, right? All the all the substance here, right, the concentration is same. Except for obviously, you can see protein is different. Why? Who can relate to what we mentioned just now? So, what is the process that takes place here that causes protein to lang song the other? Plasma protein forced out of the body, no. They cannot diffuse out. Yes, Julian, correct. Yeah, you're very good. It's because of the ultra filtration. Remember, so during ultra filtration here, when the blood forms the glomerular filtrate, there are three things that can come out: red blood cell, platelets, and plasma protein. Exactly, same the tissue fluid one, right? That's why you don't have law. So what I'm going to explain here is ultra filtration. All of this can come out, but this one cannot come out because too big. Okay, so I give you the first four points here, and then concentration of glucose, amino acid. Salt, urea, same in blood and glomerulus because all are able to diffuse through glomerulus through ultrafiltration. However, protein not found in glomerulus because you can say it is too large to diffuse through the glomerulus. Okay, actually, this one is question one, same sentence. Ah. So we have four marks already. Okay, who can come out? Who cannot? Okay, right, this first, ah, come on. Let's go. Okay, done. Next, come on. Almost there. Almost, almost there. Okay, now, glucose amino acid is found in P. Hey, sorry. It is found in here, but also found in here, right? All of this is found here, right? Because the alcohol can pass through. Okay, then next one, we compare these two. Glomerular filtrate and your urine. So glucose amino acid, we already know already, right? In your P, definitely don't have because here, I completely reabsorb already. So this one, we, we done it already, just now we know. Okay, so protein don't need to say already because it's, it's gone already. It's definitely not in any part of P and S already. So, but then urea, ah, just now only we're saying what? Urea increase. So here is because of the water decrease. Now actually, sodium and urea are supposed to be the same. So for urea, it should be more than actually here. Okay, just leave a figure. Lah. Because just like, so, sodium is salt. Lah. So just like urea, because the water volume decreased, right? Salt and urea will definitely have higher concentration inside your urea. So now we left the last two. So glucose amino acid, same as just now. Okay. Glucose amino acid found in P, but not in S, because all glucose amino acid has been completely reabsorbed. P, P is the, 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 the here. Lah, huh? Okay, here lah. Actually, they're referring to here. Okay. Parrot, because that's same thing, huh? After that, for the urea one, okay, urea salt. Concentration of salt and urea is higher in your urine, you're collecting duct there. Because, just like I said, not because water has been reabsorbed in the nephron. So nephron, again, you forget already, this whole thing is called your nephron. So throughout this whole thing, you got reabsorbed water. That's why there's lesser volume of water in your S. So concentration increase law. Finish. That's it. Done. Ta-da. Okay, guys, done already. If this one okay already, right? Huh? Uh, basically, those are the questions that they will ask about nephron. So we already done the important one. Huh? So the remaining one, please go and try yourself. Okay, so we will go through the next one. Okay, once you're done, hey, sorry, I think you're not finished, right? Okay, faster. So finish already. 
then that's how you do this essay. Then we go to page 27. Okay, go, go through a little bit more, write a little bit more things, then almost already. Come. Okay, come. Page 27. So now, the second part of kidney. So just now we really learned kidney, how they help us to excrete. Okay, so now like I say, we're going to focus on how they control water in, water in your body, which is now also going to do one question, mainly is involving the ADH. Okay, but here's the full process now, of course. Now here, osmo regulation is also sometimes known as osmo, blood osmotic pressure. Okay, at the 12.30, who tells you at the 12.30? One hour plus only, like, two hours, two hours you die, I also will die. Uh, 15 minutes later, you can finish already. Okay, very fast one. Now, osmo regulation, regulation... I never say two hours, ah, ah, you don't need me say, ah, say one hour only. Ah. Now, osmo regulation, one hour plus. Regulation of blood osmotic pressure. So, blood osmotic pressure meaning your blood bonia water pressure. Like, okay, so basically, uh, blood osmotic pressure is a bit different than blood pressure. So, blood pressure right, is whereby your, your heart pump faster, your blood pressure higher. Okay? Now, blood osmotic pressure is your blood pressure affected by the water level in your blood. So let's say this is your blood vessel. Okay, just so blood osmotic pressure is your pressure which is the water. Okay, so let's say if this is your blood vessel, if inside you have very little water, the blood osmotic pressure will be high. Okay, so let's say that this, this scenario here, I drink two liters of water. So lesser water, more higher your blood osmotic pressure. So it's a bit like physics like that. Volume and pressure, the valid one. Lesser volume, higher pressure. So similar. Lo. Okay, you get south way. Blood osmotic pressure, you get Meaning to say, when your heart pump very fast, your blood pressure is very high. But let's say if your blood got not enough water, the pressure will be even higher. Ah, so water and your, your heart can affect blood pressure, something like that. So the right hand side is the opposite. So if I drink too much water, so your blood vessel, if a lot of, of water inside, uh, higher water means lesser blood osmotic pressure. Okay? Mm, done. Hey, I mean, uh, yeah, that's the meaning of blood osmotic pressure. No, you're done. So here we got two hormones, uh, the water hormone and the salt hormone. So here you can see similar got like the pathway, the nerve impulse got stimuli, got receptor, got effector. So blood osmotic, so this is an internal stimuli. So remember, homeostasis is internal. Your What happens inside your body? So when your blood osmotic pressure too high, you drink too much, too little water. It's actually a stimulus because there's a receptor that can sense it. Okay, this receptor is called osmo receptor in your hypothalamus. So again, this week we just learned, we just also mentioned hypothalamus is a part of your brain that regulates homeostasis, regulate your internal environment. So when your when your water level too low, blood osmotic pressure too high, hypothalamus can sense it one. So it'll be more stimulated. So I want you to remember the blood osmotic pressure punya arrow. Now this arrow up, the subsequent one also is all arrow up. See, more stimulated. What if the blood is too watery? Then basically your blood cells will start to die. Lah. Too hypotonic. Lah. Your blood cells, your tissues all will start to, you know, too big, and then they, they rupture, they die. Lah. So that's why you can have too much water in your body. So, uh, yeah, hypotonic. Oh. So then, remember we say hypothalamus will control pituitary gland. Remember these two, they work together, one hypothalamus pituitary gland. So therefore, more ADH secreted by the pituitary gland. So that's the effect of your pituitary gland. Now basically, so ADH, as we know, is from your pituitary gland, will go to your kidney. Specifically, it affects the kidney punya, distal converted to build this part, right? We mentioned this is where ADH is being secreted too. So therefore, ADH will cause this part to be more permeable, the distal converted to be more permeable towards water. And therefore, more water will be absorbed. Ah, so just not enough water, so I reabsorb the water uh, back into your blood. So your blood now got water already. Okay, but at the same time, reabsorption of salt also will take place. So the time daddy also we mentioned adrenal gland punya aldosterone and ADH and water and salt do, these are both involved in osmo regulation, meaning it's opposite. So when you not enough water, the day also we say when you not enough water, you don't need salt. That can you reabsorb more salt into your body because salt will make you more hypertonic, more thirsty. That's why salt is always the valid one. So adrenal gland now will secrete 
lesser, but not zero. So opposite, just now ADH makes DCT more permeable to water. So aldosterone will make your DCT, DCT is completely tubule, less permeable to salt. So less salt reabsorb. Ah, because you don't want salt, so you don't want to absorb salt. So after this two has been completed, right? Basically, now your blood got more water already, right? So for more water, the pressure then will decrease back. Ah, so the pressure high, so you decrease back to normal. So we may add one sentence here. You can say your blood osmotic pressure decreases back to normal level. So just now, we absorb the water already. So your urine will have smaller volume and more concentrated. Ah, like every time you pee really then the color very dark, very yellow, which one. That's what, that's what happens in the end. No? Mm, initially. Okay. Now, if you forget where is the adrenal gland already, yeah, adrenal gland is on top of your kidney on, uh, over here. Uh, so that's where the adrenal comes from and affect the real social salt inside your kidney. Okay. Then the opposite situation. Okay, we look at here. What happens if you drink too much water? So basically, it's just the opposite. So now, too much water, blood osmotic pressure decrease, right? So therefore, less stimulated your osmo receptor. The water, uh, osmo receptor basically is your water receptor. Uh, that's why less ADH is secreted. Now, because now you got a lot of water already, you don't want to absorb water already. You got too much water. So now you want to eliminate the water. That's why your AD, your DCT less permeable towards water, less water reabsorb, and therefore you release all the water out lah, because you don't reabsorb the water anymore. So all the water will flow out. Lah. Okay, now salt the body. Because now your water too diluted, you want to absorb more salt to make it more concentrated. That's why aldosterone now is being secreted. Opposite ah, the arrow the balik already. So just now it's all down, right? Low osmotic pressure, less ADH, less permeable, less water reabsorbed. So now it's the other way around. You want more adosterone because you want to absorb more salt. So that the concentration of your blood will increase. Okay, so just now it's blood osmotic pressure decrease, and now you increase back to the normal level. So this is how I adjust the blood osmotic pressure. So now you'll pee more and it's more diluted. A lighter color. Okay, so let's just write this process and then I go through a little bit more things than we've done already. Come, almost there, guys. Pitch 98. 10 more minutes of that. Come. Huh? Is it possible for adrenal gland to rupture? No, la. why why suddenly your adrenal gland will rupture? No, usually that doesn't the thing nothing will cause your adrenal gland to rupture. Okay, come 98. Explain the following effects. Uh his on on it's one more word here on his urine production. So guys, this is uh again a guy in the desert. Uh, so just I just now if you desert are uh, very hot, how does it affect your urine production? Now 10 marks, right? So you got to explain the whole entire process. Okay, I forgot to mention one thing just now, right? Now, usually, right, for this part, right? Usually the only you only need to write the the the, the ADH part. Let's say for structure, lah. Structure usually three to four marks, right? ADH, you just may explain the ADH can already. But let's say if that 10 mark essay like this, ah, then you can talk about salt and also water both. Okay, guys, first, the blood osmotic pressure, high or low? Ah, so you're very hot, you sweat, as we know just now, blood osmotic pressure definitely will be high, right? Because lesser water, man. Ah, so we start by saying. Same as just now, more water is lost through sweating. So therefore, yes, blood osmotic pressure increases. Huh? Okay, done already the first one. That's, okay, I already help you to Break down to different, different parts. Ah. Have you write your essay here? Ah. All right, next. So, what is the receptor that detects your blood osmotic pressure? Your osmo receptor, right? So, therefore, osmo receptor. 
data is more stimulated. So just follow the receptor, just follow that the, the blood osmotic pressure with your arrow. Usually if cold, okay, no, so what was the question was if you if if okay, if it's cold, you usually pee more, right? That's the opposite situation. But if cold and you still drink very little water, uh okay, cold itself, right, you you pee very little already. And you pee, how say a lot. So if you drink lesser water, then the pee will be slightly lesser, but definitely will be more than during hot punya situation. So it depends on how much water is left in your body. So this, one, this question is actually very subjective. Huh? Okay, so yeah, generally cold, you pee more. But then it depends on your, your body water, original water level or how much. If your water not enough, then maybe your pee slightly lesser. But if you compare to hot, definitely it's more. Lah. Ah, so there's no fixed volume. Lah. So it depends on your body situation, depends on the surroundings. So a lot of factors will affect one. So there's no one fixed answer lah, actually. Okay, now osmo osmosis plus osmo receptor is more stimulated. So therefore, uh, pituitary gland. Okay, I would say osmo receptor in hypothalamus would be better. Lah. Ah, so therefore, pituitary gland secrete. Pituitary gland will secrete more. What hormone comes from here? Yeah, ADH, right? The and the right the food in the huh? The resis hormone. Yes, the anti diuretic hormone. <laughs> Adrenal hemorrhage. I'm not so sure what is that. Uh. I'll ask doctor uh, that one. <laughs> Too high level, you Google and see. Uh. Not so sure. So. <clears throat> okay, anti diuretic hormone. And then, okay, we explain now. Anti diuretic hormone basically causes your DCT, your kidney needed to be more permeable, right? So just follow the error, right? More anti diuretic hormone, basically, your DCT, as you for me, are distal converted to tubule becomes more permeable to water. So therefore, more water we absorb at your distal convoluted tube. Okay, so that's how we explain ADH punya function. Now, therefore, adrenal gland, the aldosterone here, the body, oh, ah, now your body got no water, you don't need salt. So therefore, you can say, no, adrenal, oops. Adrenal gland secrete lesser aldosterone. So now opposite law, DCT becomes less. Uh, not arrow down in the permeable to salt. So therefore, less salt is absorbed. And then basically your P, uh, how? So yeah, see so all arrow up, all arrow up. Then we come to sort is the body. Okay, so your P will be lesser loss. So just now, just now also you can say urine uh, form is lower in volume, but more concentrated or higher in concentration. Yeah, lesser and more concentrated. That's, okay, that's how we do that. So cold is just the balik. La. So basically, this uh question is, I mean, this answer here basically applies to all the blood osmotic pressure punya essay. La. It's the same thing. La. So you can try yourself, look at the, at the question at the next page. It's the same thing. Okay, why this further produce large amount of urea? Okay, uh, then look at the blood osmotic pressure here. So go and also look at the question and see, is it high or low? What is the situation happening there? Okay, so it's the same thing. So it's either this or the balik only. Okay, uh, able to understand, able to do. Uh. Okay, um, one last thing. Okay, we talk about kidney failure over here. This will be five minutes at that page 28. Okay, uh, okay come. 
So kidney, we all know, if you go one kidney, fail already, you still can survive with one. If both also gone, then basically the only way to save yourself now is what we call as uh juji your wa pingang ah si sen. So this one is called hemodialysis. Okay, but not literally we take out your your kidney and then go so go so like that. So <laughs> hemodialysis is basically like you you need a machine to replace your kidney. Okay, so basically what caused kidney to spoil? Kidney failure. So why people those old people sometimes kidney fail? They say kidney failure, then your kidney cannot function. So because because they eat too much what? Eat too much? Yes, too much salt law. Ah, sometimes people, they just eat very salty, a lot of uh, MSG, punya food. Yes, so if your kidney spoil, now it's very, like, not a good thing actually, not fun at all. Because right now, if your kidney spoil already, right, basically you cannot produce urea, you cannot pee. Now, normal human, we pee, we actually urea every single day, right? So if your kidney spoil already, right, you need to go to this place called Pusat Dialysis, Dialysis Center, Season Zhong Zing, to basically, kena chuchok. To this machine for a few hours and every week you're going to do it three to four times because remember every human we, we pee three to four times a day right so every week you're going to come to this place get up to choke for a few hours and then all and then because and then you cannot to choke right you see your your arms your hands right a lot of scar right? because you cannot you poke at your hand here every single day why every week because i like i say you pee every single day if your kidney spoil you right you cannot function at, at all so you need to come here almost every single day, every alternate day to remove the urea from your body. So if your kidney spoil, you cannot remove urea. So as I was saying just now, you remove urea, you pee three to four times a day. If one day you don't go to this center, your body is a lot of urea build up already. Okay? Ah, so, so yeah, every alternate day you have to go, but you don't have to go every day. So basically what happens here is, right? Okay, let me just draw something here. Okay, you can look at my notes here. But then I, I just uh I draw for you here. Okay, let's say this is a person, okay, because he every day eat a lot of KFC, uh very salty. Okay, his kidney is spoiled already. Okay, it's his kidney black color already. Okay, so now you can see right the person in my notes there, right? There's two things to throw into his body. Okay, basically one to throw into his artery, the other to throw into his vein. So just like just now, there are two blood vessels connected to your kidney, right? The renal artery, the renal vein. So same, artery is the one that goes into your kidney, right? So they will choke the first blood vessel, the first tube into your artery to remove blood from the artery. Okay, so this tube will then be connected into a machine. Okay, so by the way, you can see my dose also got written already. This tube is called a dialysis tube, which is semi permeable means small things can pass through it. So this dialysis tubing is then connected to, to a machine. Okay, so this machine inside right, is called, okay, this is called a dialysis machine. Yeah, right here. So everything just add the word dialysis. So this thing is called a dialysis machine, whereby inside you have dialysis fluid. Every time you need to pay, yes, lah, correct. Lah. That's why you take care of your kidney. Don't eat too salty. If you too salty, is what you have to do when you're old. Anyway, and then every day, every week, every few days, you got to come here for a few hours. Meaning, you cannot go and work properly. You cannot go and play. You cannot go to Vegas. You cannot do anything. Basically, you got no life really after that. Okay? Okay, we go through this process first. Huh? Now, so, inside this machine, right, your dialysis, okay, what is dialysis fluid, this thing here? Now, dialysis fluid, right, over here, DF, is the same concentration as your blood plasma. same as your human blood plasma. But of course, right, the blood inside the dialysis tubing is not clean to your blood. Okay, because you don't have, your kidney cannot function to, 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 to uh, excrete your urea. So the, the blood inside the dialysis tubing, right, okay, just put here, blood, is definitely very dirty compared to the dialysis fluid. You have more urea, definitely. You have more salt and probably maybe also got excess water inside. So, passive transport of high to low. So, therefore, this urea, excess salt, and water, right, all will diffuse out of your dialysis tubing and go into your dialysis fluid. Over here. All the, the, the dirty substance will diffuse out into the dialysis fluid. So, once your blood comes out from this machine, your blood basically is filtered, it's clean already, and then you go into your vein. So, just like how the renal vein removes blood that is clean out from your kidney. So, same thing here. Okay. So basically, this is how these things work. Lah. 
But then a lot of you, a lot of you will ask, eh, then this fluid don't, don't won't it become dirty and contaminated? As well, this dialysis fluid, right? They will change it. There will be new fluid that will be pumped into it constantly, and then the the old one will be pumped out constantly. So they will regularly keep on changing the fluid inside, uh, to make sure the fluid inside is clean, uh. Understand? So you got to do that for three, four hours, basically just sit there, and you need to do it three to four times a week. So basically your life gone. There's nothing, no fun in your life already. Okay, then some of you say, why can't we just get someone to donate a kidney? Now, people who are willing to donate kidney is this much. People who need kidney is this much. So the waiting list is very long. So some people, they don't even get to wait until their turn, they die. Then they just pass, they pass away while waiting. So uh, yeah, that's why there are people in black market selling kidney. Yeah, that's why kidney very expensive. Huh? Okay, that's why they say kidney can trade in for iPhone huh? because yes, it's very valuable, but a lot of people want it. Okay. Why people start call one kidney so you can survive? Yeah, because you only need one kidney to survive. So if both of your kidney also spoil, then only you need to go for this. Usually, if you, you have one kidney, you still need to go for this dialysis, but not very often. Probably maybe once or twice a, a month like that. Lah. Okay? Mm, yeah, more work for your kidney. So if you have one kidney, right, sometimes the kidney will fail anytime also because the kidney will be under a lot of stress. Okay? And one kidney person right, also need to go for hemodialysis, but not very often, basically. Okay, yes, a lot of restrictions on your diet, correct. So you, if you have one kidney, then you must really, really jaga your diet. If not, the remaining kidney will spoil also. Okay, so the process here usually will ask in structure, three to four marks. Okay, last one, then you can go away. So last one, you just say uh, artery, blood from artery enters dialysis tubing. Then this dialysis tubing flows into dialysis machine, which got dialysis fluid. Okay, then urea and salts will diffuse out. And then finally, your clean punya blood, filtered punya blood, must soak back your vein. Finish. Okay. How do I sell? You cannot sell kidney legally. There's no such as selling organ. There's only donating organ. Okay. So you can choose to donate your kidney. Since you have two, you can anytime just go to hospital and say, I want to donate kidney. Or before you die, there's this call uh, organ donation program where you sign up. Uh, whereby you sign an agreement saying that the day when you die, you agree to donate your kidney to the hospital. Yeah, so there's two ways. Okay, yeah, you can donate your body so you can go volunteer for this thing. You can't sell your kidney. Okay? There's only, you only can sell your kidney illegally. You cannot sell your, your kidney illegally. Okay, no such thing. Huh? Alright, so that's it for today. Goodbye, guys.